I grew up with this guy. During my formative years, Michael Landon seemed to be on TV all the time. He was Little Joe on Bonanza, a show that I would watch after school during the weekdays if I could get my homework done quickly enough. He was also on endless Kodak commercials. And of course, he was also on this show, Little House on the Prairie, where he played the patriarch of the Ingalls family for nine wonderful seasons. And truth be told, he was so much more. He was the driving force behind the show. Landon spent so much time and energy helping to bring the world of the Little House books by Laura Ingalls Wilder to life. Clearly, this show was special to him, and he wanted it to be special for those viewers who elected to watch the show each week as well. I guess that's why it's so surprising that this happened to the set during the filming of the show's last episode. Well, actually a final TV movie called The Last Farewell. And just in case you're asking yourself, did they really blow up the entire set? Or was it just some sort of special effects magic? Well, my friends, they really did it. Well, at least most of the set. I'll cover that in a minute. So what the heck happened? Why would Michael Landon and the rest of the Little House team decide to blow up good old Walnut Grove? Well, the answers are out there, but which answer you get really depends on who you ask. The story I remember hearing decades ago is that the show was obliged to return the area where the set was located to its original condition, and blowing up the buildings, which were mostly just three-dimensional props anyway, well, it was simply the easiest way to get the process started, to get the ball rolling, if you will. But there is another story floating around the interwebs that contends that Landon was so darn upset at the cancellation of the show that he wanted to send the network a message, a big middle finger to the executives who decided to cancel the show. That said, according to Melissa Gilbert, Michael's anger was less about the actual cancellation of the show and more about the way it was communicated to him. Michael, who at the time was staunchly loyal to NBC, had expected that he would have gotten a call from the network's head honcho at the time, Brandon Tartikoff. But that didn't happen. Instead, he somehow heard about it secondhand from Half Pint herself. Melissa Gilbert, in an interview that can be found right here on YouTube, provides another reason for Landon's decision to forever destroy the show's set. End of the day, it was all about closure. And you know what? I like this idea the best. None of the cast really wanted to see Olsen's Mercantile reused on another program. These buildings, the entire set was special. It was on set, after all, where Gilbert and the rest of the show's young cast had grown up and experienced many of the special first moments in life that happen in the real world off of a Hollywood production lot. So, Michael decided that closure and a sense of finality needed to be provided to everyone who had ever worked on Little House. The plot of The Last Farewell involves a greedy land developer who has managed to acquire the deed to the entire township. It provided the perfect opportunity for the cast and crew to turn the page and move on to new projects. I think it's important to point out that Michael chose not to blow up the Ingalls Little House or the church, but everything else, well, let's just say that Michael Landon got the closure that he was hoping for. And after the end of Little House, Michael, along with his pal Victor French, helped bring to life another fantastic TV show, Highway to Heaven, for five seasons on NBC. Not long after the cancellation of that show, while on a ski trip in my home state of Utah in 1991, Michael started to get migraines that were near unbearable. And after a visit to the doctor and a host of tests, it was determined that he had developed a form of pancreatic cancer that was swift-moving and inoperable. Just months later, Michael would pass away. And while he has left us, he's not really gone. Every time I catch an episode of Little House, Bonanza, or Highway to Heaven, I am reminded about this man's zest for life, as well as what a tremendous force for good this man truly was. 
Now it's your turn. Please share your memories in the comments section. And while you're at it, I would love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I'd be absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.